Latte art is fun, and there's no denying that. But it can also be kind of difficult and frustrating when you're pouring and pouring, whether you're a home barista or a cafe barista, and you're not really progressing. So in today's rare latte art focused video, I'm going to show you my top three tips to improve your latte art instantly. The first tip is don't stop pouring after your base, unless you need to. Of course, some designs require a lot of starting and stopping, but when learning and pouring latte art, especially the designs that require a nice consistent flow, or lots of ripples, stopping after your base not only loses that momentum, requiring a more aggressive pour to get the correct mixture of milk and milk foam to pop out on top of the crema, which also means your cup gets filled faster and you end up with less room for your design. In latte art circles, you'll hear the term push a lot. Now to me that can mean two different things, but both techniques or both ideas are required to getting that full frame coverage or full frame art in your cup. But in the simplest of terms, a push is just a boost of momentum of the milk from your pitcher. The push is a key factor throughout most latte art pours, and in a lot of cases we do it by instinct, but I also have seen a lot of places where people tend to struggle. When you start your design, you'll want to push the bottom of it towards the opposite side of your cup. You'll have to be a little more aggressive with it if you pause post base, and a little less if you drop in without a pause. This is something that comes into play in a lot of designs. Of course, it goes without saying in the tulip, as you need to push each stack as you make another, but places where it doesn't feel as instinctual, like during rippled bases and rosettas. Both of which start in the same way. The entry push, then you begin to ripple. As the design reaches the tip of your pitcher, you'll need to push forward gently to get the design to widen and begin to wrap around the sides of your cup. From there, if you're doing a rosetta, you then begin to pull back. For a rippled base, you'll want to stop with enough room to add in whatever other stacks or designs you're adding on top of it. But each of these additions should also be pushed into the center, further causing the ripples to wrap and fill the space in your cup. As awkward as it may be to film yourself pouring latte art, it's a huge benefit to be able to look back at your pours, your technique, and break down both your good and your bad habits. We can always see where we fell short by picking our designs apart once they're all said and done. But as we pour them, things are escalating rapidly and it's hard to pinpoint those issues. So you should film yourself to get a better grasp on what needs to change mid-pour, as well as comparing it to those you want to emulate on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, or wherever. And with all that said, I'm wrapping this one up, pun intended. Of course, if you have any questions about the techniques I talked about today, latte art in general, or anything coffee related, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. Don't be shy, and of course, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to help me make more and better videos, check out my Patreon at the link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. Check out my Instagram at Spermetheus for content throughout the week, my blog at Spermetheus.com, my coffee at LittleGiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.